now you did see that so you see as I'm pushing the button it just acts like a one shot because the count button is being pushed and then it's turning the count button off after the count happens now that's in the if statement right here all right so in this video what we're going to do is do a counting system using an if then else statement and structure text again the environment we're using is is codesys so this is going to be the software programming software we're going to be using for plc programming and let's go ahead and make our variables um, again I've, to save some time i went ahead and started added our visualization there's nothing in here there's nothing in the program we are actually working in the plc program in the main task so let's add our our variables in here uh, this is going to be a counting system using if then else so we need to have we're going to count up all right and then we're going to declare that which is a bool and then we're going to count we're going to have our count all right so this is going to be our count which is going to be an integer all right so an int and then we're going to have our next thing is going to be count we'll just call this count and we'll call this in progress I like to spread out my words so when I what I mean by that is I like to spread out with uh, the underscores so that you can you know they're easy to just read you know I mean the, the main thing about coding these days is to make it user friendly so we're gonna do this countdown um, and and to make it where it's, it's readable right so if somebody with a little bit of uh, background behind it can easily come back and see that uh, easily come back and read it and not have to really take too much time and stress itself out or, uh, you know coding is hard enough so that's why I like to, to put in the, the wording the way I do you can call it whatever you want to you could have called this whatever uh, whatever uh, keypad functions you want so um, with all that said we have this in here now so let's call this uh, if and then we're gonna use our variable count up so if count up happens so if count up and this automatically pulls up to your application if count up happens then we want to use the count and our count is going to be equal to our count plus one so this is going to be like an addition right so this is going to be count plus one and then we're going to close that off and then we're going to say we're going to actually turn our count up button off so count up we're going to turn that to an off state Oop. and it actually came up here and put that up there um, so let's let's come back and fix our end if real quick and come in and put this i don't know how my my cursor got off but it did and so just make sure you're mindful of, of what you're doing so this is going to be equal to zero. All right. So then we have that. And then we're going to say else if. Remember the else is spelled. Uh, it it removes the e, right? So else if the countdown happens. All right. So else if the countdown happens, then what we want to do, and we're going to say let's limit the countdown so it can't go below zero. Uh, and let's come in here and add the count and say has to be greater than zero then so we're creating a, a small statement saying oh by the way you have to be above zero to be able to count down right so we're going to say the count and we're going to uh, do our subtraction here so this would be our count equal to count and we're going to come over here put this in here count Let's change the, the size of this, sorry. I want to make sure that we get the, where well, you can see it better. All right, so the count minus one, and then close that off. And then we're gonna actually do count in progress. Um, actually the count in progress, let's just keep out right now. We're, we don't really care if the count's in progress or not. Let's just do counting uh, as far as having it there, right? So let's just do small counting. And so the count in progress we're gonna ignore I think um, and then we'll come in here just so we can uh, not focus too much on other stuff we can focus directly on the what we're implementing which is the counting system 
that's really what we're out. All right, so we have this in here. It's really, really, really a simple process, right? So we're saying if the count up happens, we're, we're gonna have a button and then we're going to take the count and then plus one and then turn the count button off. So it only counts one time. It's like a one shot without having a one shot. So think about a one shot, right? You can use a one shot instruction or you can think about having a one shot where you can, we can modify things where they act just like a one shot. And that's sometimes a better environment. So we're gonna say else if the count down happens, then we're going to count, uh, and, the, and the count is above one, um, or above zero, then we're going to the, uh, enable the ability to minus, right? So at that point, what I'll do is we're gonna come in and add some visuals. We're gonna have some simple visuals in this. This is gonna be really, really simple. So we're gonna have uh, just a button. Let's do a push button. So I have a push button and we'll copy that. We'll have two of them. And you know, if you've seen any of my videos, you're going to see uh, I me align these things because uh, that's just the proper way to do things in my opinion. So now we're gonna have our variable in here and our variable is gonna be our count up button. So this is gonna be count up. This one's gonna be count down. <clears throat> All right, so this is gonna be count down. And what we're gonna do is add in our, some, like a text feature so we can understand what we're pressing. All right, so let's put in a text to say count, count up button. And let's come in here, put that in there. Let's change the font. So you, it's, it's easier to read. All right, let's just change the font a little bit. Um, and let's come in here and add that like a bold and keep that just like that. So it's, it's just easier to read that way. So we'll copy that, paste that, and then drag this down here so we can save a little bit of time. And this would be count down. And that looks good just like that. Let's get that basic centered over here. Now we want to come in and add a visual to say what the count is, right? So how do we do that? We use a text field, right? And then we're going to come in our text field and our text is going to call a percent %i, which is going to be calling a variable. It's going to be calling the text variable. All right, and the text variable, what we're going to have is our count. Now we need to change so we can see this a little bit better. We need to change our actual font, <clears throat> okay? So let's change our font color. And it's like I say, you can't see it. It's hard to really understand what's going on. So uh, let's put this as 14 so you can see it easy. Now you can see I changed the colors, right? So the back color normally is this. So now let's change the, the color over here to, and this is the frame color so that we get that highlighted box around it and make it just fit in that much easier. All right, so this may look like a percent I right now, but that's just calling that variable. So what we wanna do is come back and go in our code right now and go, and let's see, we, we made sure all our variables, let's double check our variables, made sure all of them are there. Okay, all of our variables are in there. Let's go into our code and let's go into build. Now the build is uh, again, the compile. So the compile is very important to make sure that you ha don't have any errors. Also to get it to a point where it, the uh, simulate will work properly in code sys. So uh, once that's done, you wanna come in and, and turn on your simulate and then turn on, you wanna log into, and this is the download section. Like so that's the, the login is treated like a download in the simulate. So it does take a second to generate the code and then populate it, right? There's no errors, then we're gonna come into our debug and we're going to start our debug. Okay, so then we're gonna drag our, I like to drag the uh, visual out here so we can see that, so we can see the count. And I don't, I don't wanna populate it in here. So, all right, so you can see the count, you can see everything good. So let's push the button, let's hold the button down, right? Okay, so we're pushing the button and we can see it counting up. Right, so we can count up to whatever we want to. But let's see 
if when we push this, if, if our limit that we put in here, which is the right the code right here, we want to say if our limit won't allow us to go any lower than zero. So even though I'm pushing the button, it's not allowing us to go any further than zero. Just a little protection agents, right? So you can code these things however you want to to make sure they work properly. And right, I'm just using a standard button here, and I'm using I'm turning the button off with inside of the if if then else statement, right? Now that's that's a really powerful tool. Right, so that shows you how to count. That shows you how to increase, and it also gives you that thought pattern too. Um, and let's increase this a little bit more so you can see it. That also gives you a thought pattern too of what do you actually, you know, can't? Do you have to? Are you forced to forced by the hand to, to use a one shot, or do you? Can you just come in here and actually, you know, code this to control up uh, or control down? Now you did see that, so you see. As I'm pushing the button, it just acts like a one shot because the count button is being pushed and then it's turning the count button off after the count happens. Now that's in the if statement right here. Notice the in the, in the if statement right here, if I go down below zero, it will keep the button on. See, the button's on right now. And that's because it didn't tell it, it the else statement can't finish because it's not below zero. So we can write code to actually block that and to change that out and say, oh, by the way, uh, we want to do that anyway. But it's not really hurting anything, right? It's not really hurting anything at all. So in this atmosphere, I mean, there are things that you can come back and do. So, But I just wanted to kind of highlight, you don't necessarily have to use a one shot. Uh, sometimes they could be a little bit harder to implement. If you think about and logically think about the way you break down your code, you can actually do that within your code and just turn the bit off uh, or even maybe do uh, some graphical stuff with your actual visualization just think about things a little bit different and kind of challenge yourself to go and you know work back and forth you know because again the more you understand the stuff the better you're going to be and I think that you know causing different uh, effects to happen and saying okay we don't necessarily need an instruction if we can just code it this way so um, again Think about that and think about things you can do and hopefully that kind of opens your eyes up to the way things can be. And uh, with all that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.